Hello and good evening, you all. Hope you can hear me. And as always, please let me know that you do. Hi, Andrea. I hope you can hear me as well. Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. It's good to have you back here. And uh, of course, let me just remind uh, to everyone that we are here every single day with all kinds of topics on IVF. And of course, uh, we invite lots of experts in top fertility experts, but also some uh, some supporters, some coaches, so that you can simply uh, gather some knowledge and find out what can we do in this uncertain times like we having right now uh, everyone is struggling with uh, with staying home perhaps and also not being able to uh, go ahead with their treatment so that that is why the stronger together initiative has been created so um thanks to our ambassadors and partners we, it is all possible and today with us we have actually our ambassador of this Stronger Together initiative. Uh, she is um, uh, she is Andrea Trigo, you can see her right here. Uh, mm -hmm. She is also like a multi-awarded nurse, consultant, an author, TEDx speaker, director at Infertile Life. And she will today uh, help you out a bit. Hopefully she will of course start with her presentation and then we will um, go to your questions and so remember you can type those questions in the chat section and uh, and then Andrea will be happy to to help you out as much as possible uh, and of course Andrea will simply talk about uh, what we can do now uh, in this in this uncertain time and how we can um, take care of our fertility health etc so happy to have you back and so happy that you have been joining us and being our ambassador when it comes to Stronger Together Initiative. It's always a pleasure. Hi, Andre, and how are you feeling today? Hi, thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Caroline. I'm feeling amazing, um, but I've, I've been doing so much work um, behind the scenes, helping so many people just from my computer, because mm -hmm. people are really, really struggling with the pandemic, people are struggling with the uncertainty, the global uncertainty of what's going to happen, what does it mean for their fertility journeys. So people are struggling, there's a lot of fear, worry, anxiety and all of that. So I've been doing a lot of support work and today I thought it would be really important to talk about what is it that you can actually do to support your journey because eventually Eventually, we our lives will go back to normal. Eventually, you will be able to have fertility treatment. So, is there anything that you can do now whilst you are in lockdown that can support you in, in that journey? So that's exactly what we will be talking about today. And in specific, we're going to talk about very specific and practical strategies, eight of them. So stay till the end. Um, and if you can have pen and paper, but this webinar is being recorded, so you can always come back to it. Perfect. For, for those who don't know me, um, I was diagnosed with infertility when I was 17 years old. So I was told that I was born without a uterus. At the time, I wasn't actually trying to conceive at 17. As you can imagine, if anything, we are all trying to avoid a pregnancy at that age. So the diagnosis was very devastating to me um, at that time, but I managed to cope rather well. And it was only a few years ago when I looked back and I saw, well, actually, um, I coped well. I think I can give back to our community, to other people who are struggling, who actually are being diagnosed in their 30s and they don't have the time to process all these feelings, all these emotions, and develop the coping skills. So if I can help them in that process. So that, that's when my journey in the world of reproductive health started. But I've been a nurse for much longer than that. So it was just about redirecting my career, training as an NLP coach. And since then, since I embraced my, my mission, um, that's when I became a TEDx speaker, started writing books, talking at conferences, and a new project called the Enhanced Fertility Program was born. 
which is all about improving your fertility. So all the behaviors, lifestyle, environment, all the things that you can do. And so many times doctors who are involved in treating you, they are not aware of all these other things that you can do. So it's about having the overall picture. So that is what I've been doing so far. And today we're going to talk about three very specific things. We're going to talk about what is fertility health, uh, very specific definitions. What are the main stressors that you are experiencing during this lockdown that can affect your fertility? And how can you manage this well-being? So if we look at fertility health, the World Health Organization defines it as a complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So it's not just about your eggs, your sperm, your uterus. It's physical, it's mental, and it's about social well-being as well. And it's a lot more than the absence of disease. So fertility health is not just not having endometriosis, not having PCOS, not having uh, a male factor problem. It's more than the absence of disease. And it's about have people having the ability to have a satisfying sex life and having the freedom to decide if, when, and how often they want to reproduce. And you can start seeing that if, when, and how, these are things that are being affected right now. So this lockdown is affecting our fertility health in all three aspects, physical, mental, and social well-being. So I decided to look at all these aspects, the physical well-being, the mental, and the social well-being, and look at the specific things that are being stressors, things that are potentially that can make your fertility worse during this time. Because if we know what the stressors are, then we can do something about it. We can prevent it or we can improve them. So one of the important things that can affect your physical well-being when it comes to fertility is your nutrition, what you eat. It may be that now that whilst you are in lockdown and you're going to the supermarket less often, you don't have as much access to fresh produce or to the products that you were used to buying. Um, it also has to do with the activity because we're not being able to go out or go to the gym or be as active as we would like to be. And we know that the activity levels is something that can affect our fertility too much or too little. The weight is also something that affects fertility. So if you have very low weight or a very high weight, that can affect your fertility. And if you are in a, in a situation of being in lockdown and you're not eating as healthy and you're not being as active, then that's something that can affect your weight and therefore affect your fertility. And the final aspect of this physical well-being that I would like to talk about are the toxins. So here we are including toxins that are in food. We're talking about toxins that are in the products that we use, shampoos, products in our body, um, products that we use to clean the house. So we might be a bit more limited in the products that we buy. And it might be that we have to buy more products that are bringing these toxins into our system and causing, affecting our physical fertility. And then the second aspect about the mental well-being, it's such an important one at the moment because the fear, the anxiety, the worry are major, major feelings. So if you are feeling any of these at the moment, know that you're not alone. And why is it that we're feeling this way? Are we, why are we feeling afraid? Why are we worried? Why are we anxious? One of the aspects has to do with the routine because we were used to having a routine we would wake up go to work come back home leave work at work and then just have our normal life or go to the gym or watch a bit of tv and at the moment we can lose that routine because we 
we are, most of us are working from home. It might be that we're not waking up at the same time, or it, it's sometimes difficult to separate work from living space. So not having a routine affects our mental well-being. Sleep can also be a problem. If you're not used to going back to going to bed at a certain time, waking up at a certain time and carry on with your day, it might be a problem. And because you are in lockdown and every day basically seems the same day over and over again, you almost forget which day of the week it is. Uh, and if your sleep is disturbed, it can affect your mental well-being and your fertility as well. About the work and living space, I've also already talked about it, but working from home, you have a lot of distractions from your living space. So you have all these things that you have to do. You have to do the dishes, you need to make your bed, you need to, to be with your, uh, with your family. You have a pile of housework to do, whilst you have a pile of work work to do. So having these two together, it almost can feel like an overwhelming list of things to do. So if we are not able to separate these two spaces, it can affect our mental well-being. The next point is space for ourselves and space for others. If we are living in a house with other people and we are all working from home, living at home, being together at home, it might be that we are feeling almost like there is no space for us to be with ourselves, with our own thoughts, and that can affect our mental well-being. And the final point is the global uncertainty and the reproductive uncertainty that we are all going through because we don't know when the pandemic is going to end. We don't know when fertility clinics are going to op open. We don't know if uh, we are able to go ahead with treatment. We don't know if treatment is going to be successful. And all these ideas, all these thoughts around uncertainty trigger the fear, trigger the anxiety and affect our mental well-being. And then finally, the last aspect of fertility health that is suffering at the moment is the social aspect because we have to social distance ourselves from other people we're not seeing friends as much as we could we're not seeing anyone unless we live with them or we have to go to work um, as key workers and maybe we're not enjoying the fertility groups that we would otherwise and for a lot of us we're feeling even more isolated than most people because so many people have their perfect families, perfect, families, and they're being able to have time with their friends, of time with their husbands, time with their children, and we don't have children yet. So we, it might be that some of us are feeling a bit more isolated than than um, than we could. So these are all things that can potentially affect our fertility health during the lockdown. And today, you're going to leave this webinar with eight strategies to tackle all of these stressors, okay? And one of the things that I want to tell you about is about the basic principle that will go through all these strategies. And it's the basic principle that whatever we're feeling, if we're feeling angry, if we're feeling frustration, fear, worry, anxiety, whatever we're feeling always comes from a thought that we have in our head. It might be that the thought is, well, I'm never going to become a parent, for example. That thought triggers a certain feeling. The feeling triggers an action and the actions we take lead to our results. So the whole eight strategies that I'm going to teach you today are all about challenging the thoughts in your head, challenging the feelings you have and managing them, and so you can have appropriate actions, so you can get the results you, you want to get at the end of the lockdown, 
which is having your treatment or getting pregnant naturally. So the first strategy that I want to tell you about is about is accepting that it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay not to be okay is the first strategy because it, you need to acknowledge what you are feeling. You need to acknowledge that things are not ideal, that things are not perfect in order for you to work on them. And if you are feeling fear, anxiety, worry, just accept that and accept those as normal responses to an abnormal situation that you are going through. It's normal to be afraid. It's normal to be worried. It's normal to be anxious. So have a bit of self-compassion towards yourself. You are only human and all emotions are absolutely normal. Okay, so just accept your emotions, don't fight them, and don't judge them. Just accept them as they come and say, okay, I'm feeling sad. Um, the situation is not going as I wish I had. I'm not where I wanted to be in life right now. That makes me feel sad, but I accept it and I'm not going to judge it. Step number two is all about letting go of what you cannot control and this is a big one because a lot of us are feeling those feelings of sadness of angry worry anxiety because we are focusing on the things that we cannot control so today we need to start by letting go putting aside all the things that we cannot control and what is the number one thing that you cannot control in the middle of this pandemic is you cannot predict what is going to happen. You cannot predict how long this is going to last. We can only go day by day. We cannot predict how other people will respond to the recommendations. We cannot predict how they follow or don't follow the social distancing rules. And you cannot predict if there is enough toilet paper in the store or not. So there's lots of things that you cannot control. And if we keep fo focusing on this, then we keep having these fears and there is nothing we can do about it. And the fears will start getting worse and worse. So we need to stop ourselves from focusing what we cannot control. And the easiest way to stop doing that and letting go is to choose things that we can actually control. Um, and we're going to focus on this. And things that we can control, number one is choosing how you respond to those circ circumstances that you cannot control. And I would like to tell you that all of us ha already have pre-existing experience of situations that are outside our control because we have been through infertility. It's a very upsetting situation that we didn't choose, we didn't do anything to go through it, but it happened to us. And it's outside our control that it happened to us, but our ultimate choice is how we respond. And that we can always control is your ultimate power is how you respond to, to these circumstances to the pandemic to to infertility or to whatever happens in life that you feel you have no control over you can still choose your attitude you can still choose your thoughts aha uh -huh. and you can tell me but sometimes these nasty thoughts come in my head and, and i didn't choose them they just pop up that's true we all have that tiny voice sometimes telling us stuff that is totally unhelpful. And what do we do then? We just challenge it and we say, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. My thoughts are not myself. So you can choose which thoughts pop in your head that you focus on and the thoughts that you don't focus on. You can control whether you are following the government recommendations. You can control if you are social distancing yourself from other people. If reading the news gives you anxiety, you can choose the amount of news you read. 
the amount of information that you're putting on your brain. You can find, for example, new things to do at home, completely up to you. You can organize work from home. And ultimately, you can control your kindness and your grace as responses to this pandemic, as responses to the things that you cannot control. So if you can think of one thing today that you can let go of, just what would it be? Write down on a piece of paper the thing that you're going to let go today in this moment and you're not focus on it anymore. Because now you have things that you are aware that you can control of and you will focus on them. Now, the next story, you, you have ready, okay, I mean, that's fine. I'm good. I cannot control. Start. Starting the day out in my view. Fertility mean is a mindfulness technique that takes about three minutes only. So it's very quick, easy, anyone can do it. And it's all about setting your brain to that focus moment when you say to yourself, I am confident, I have the grace, the love, the power to cope with whatever comes my way. Because if you start your day already, if you're already angry, and then something else that is that happens, how do you think you're going to respond? So you set your mindset on thinking away, okay? And you are in point where you and you have the grace, the kindness, and the power, then you feel, okay, I can cope with anything I want. And I'm more than happy to share with you this for the all day. And you can just sign yourself to feel better. As soon as they start, if something bad happens, then you want to go with it. Then the next strategy, number four, is nine. This one. Let's see, something happens throughout the day. I think slide isn't showing up. So, this strategy is in line with the previous. You get to that point where I'm okay to start the day right, brilliant, but something happens. You read something in the news or something happens that triggers some sort of sadness, anger, frustration, and your brain starts thinking about all the things that can go wrong. Okay, we've all been there. So I want what I want you to do in that instance is to introduce short pauses in your day-to-day -day life. And how do you introduce short pauses in your day-to-day -day life? You're going to use your five senses. And you're going to say, in this moment, what is one thing that I can see? And in this moment, I might say, OK, I can see the computer screen. I can see my home office. And I'm bringing my attention, instead of thinking of the future that hasn't happened, I'm bringing my attention to what I can see right now. What is one thing that I can hear? At this moment, I'm not hearing anything, so I'm completely sound blocked <laughs> in this room. But you could see that you're hearing me, or you're hearing the TV, or you're hearing your partner, whatever it is. One thing you can see, one thing you can hear, one thing you can feel, and I can feel my jumper, I can feel myself on a chair. I can say, for example, one thing I taste, I can still taste coffee. I've had a coffee before starting this webinar. And one thing I can smell, I can still smell 
the coffee that I have the coffee cup here next to me. So when your mind starts flying away with things that are not helpful to you, just bring it back by using your five senses and noticing something that you can see, hear, feel, taste, and smell in the present moment. Now, this has all been about the head now. Now we're going to move to strategies that are more about the body. So, we have here healthy eating is one of the most important things that you can do during this lockdown to make sure that you are ready for fertility treatment once the clinics open again. And because you are in lockdown, it means that you are cooking from home, meaning you can cook from scratch. So you have the ingredients and you cook them from scratch, means you eat less takeaway, eat less food that has been prepared by other people that you don't know what they've put in it. So cooking healthy foods from scratch, eating seasoned products. So these are products that are growing in this season instead of matured, I don't know, over how many months um, with hormones or antibiotics or whatever toxins they can put on them just to make sure that we have them throughout the year. So eating from scratch produ products that are available right now in this season, foods that are unprocessed. Unprocessed foods are foods that you can eat as easily as they grow. So if you eat, for example, an apple, it's completely unprocessed. If you eat, for example, a piece of grilled chicken, it's minimally processed because all you had to do is the chicken has it comes and you applied it on, on the grill and you've eaten it. If you eat, for example, something that comes out of a packet, a pre-prepared a pre meal that you put in the microwave, that is highly processed. Highly processed foods are worse for your fertility. So you have this opportunity that you are in lockdown to eat a bit more healthier by eating foods that are that don't need a lot of processing. You also have an amazing opportunity to try new recipes. There are so many healthy recipes um, at the moment online. Everyone seems to be doing amazing cooking, amazing baking. So look for foods that are for healthy recipes and why not try a new recipe once a week? So that might also help you with your time and doing something fun at home. And I usually say when it comes to healthy eating, it's all about the 80-20 the rule, which means that you eat healthy 80% of the time. And 20% of the time, you allow yourself to eat things that are less healthy, but that bring you joy. For example, Easter has just gone. You could eat an Easter egg, a bit of chocolate, or a, bit of, or a few cookies, whatever it is. Don't follow into the must-do healthy diet all 100% of the time. Just follow the 80-20 rule. And finally, one thing that I found really, really helpful is mindful eating. I don't know if you have practiced already, but mindful eating, so for example, I have here an apple. When you have food or a plate, instead of just eating as in automatic pilot, you just look at the food in your plate or in this case in my hand and I notice I can see an apple, it's round in shape, it's green and I smell it, then I see how it tastes in my mouth. So just using your five senses and apply it to what you're eating is called mindful eating. So all of these things will help you keep your body a bit healthier. And remember, it takes about three months for all these healthier behaviors to make changes to your sperm and eggs. So if you are able to stick to these healthy eating and healthy behaviors for three months, that's the perfect timing because when you, when you come to have fertility treatment, you will have better quality eggs and better quality sperm 
to, to work with. The next strategy that we have here is all about keeping active. And I know it's a bit challenging because we're not being able to go out, um, but at least in the UK, we're still allowed to go out once a day for a bit of exercise, which is good. If you have to exercise at home, you don't need a lot of equipment and you don't even need a lot of space. All you need to do is go on YouTube and look for 10 minute, 20 minute home workout videos. And there are so many of them. So that's one of the ways of keeping active. Another way of keeping active is to choose an activity that gives you a sense of meaning, a sense of pleasure, and a sense of accomplishment. And these three things, meaning, pleasure, and accomplishment, are super, super important. Because you are in a state where you've had to stop your treatment, you are feeling that you're not accomplishing as much as you should have or that you're not moving forward with your journey as quickly uh, as you'd like. So having that sense of, okay, I'm doing something that's enjoyable and I'm accomplishing something maybe will be good. And for some people, it might be, for example, reading a book or maybe listening to a podcast about a topic that they would like to do, to learn about, maybe joining a, a webinar series, or maybe an online course, or maybe doing some gardening, whatever it is, you need to choose one activity that gives you meaning, pleasure, and accomplishment. So I'd like to write it down now. If you could do something maybe twice a week that gives you that absolute joy, what activity would that be? Just write it down on, on your piece of paper. And then let's go to strategy number seven. And it's all about your environment, okay? In my head, when I have my environment, either work or home environment is organized, I always feel like I can't be as productive. And who, else, who else feels that way? So if I can't be as productive, I will not feel accomplished. I will not feel pleasure. And I will feel that I'm not moving on with whatever. It's just a big pile of things to do. So one of the key things to work on is to break down all the things that you need to do into small pieces. It might be organizing your closet. It might be cleaning the house, doing some ironing. Um, whatever it is, break it down into small tasks. And as you're doing it, if you notice that there are things that don't serve you, maybe things that you haven't used in one year, just get rid of them. Things you don't use, things that don't give you joy, things that don't serve a purpose, just get rid of them and open space to bring into new things into your life that you actually enjoy. Removing all these distractions. Because when you have to work, if you see a pile of iron, clothes to iron next to you, no one is going to feel very motivated or focused to work. So removing all the distractions when you are working is really, really important. And if you want to feel motivated, something I highly recommend is to visualize the result. How will your environment look like once it's organized? How will you feel when your environment is organized? How proud will you be? How more productive will you be? So this is a great, Great tip. Then we have here, this is our last tip, but it's really, really important because being on lockdown means that you need to have time for work, for others, and for yourself. And sometimes, because everything is happening on the same space, it all becomes a bit blurry and we don't know what to do and things can become a bit out of balance. 
So the most important thing is to have a routine. Waking up at a certain time, brushing your teeth, getting dressed, ready to work, and when you are working, have that working space separate from your living space as far as possible. So you're focusing on work. And once your working hours are finished, you close your computer and you go into your living space. And this is the time when you do your house uh, house chores. This is the time when you might spend time with, with family and others. And this is the time when you need to find some space for yourself. It's so important for us to be with ourselves, with our own thoughts. It's important for us to do activities that we're doing just by ourselves, just because we enjoy doing them. So having this balance of time between work time and workspace, house time, time for others, and time for ourselves, it's really, really important. And you can reflect on it, think about it. How balanced was your work, others, and your self-time this past week? What else could you do? How could you adjust it? So these are very simple eight strategies that will make sure that you are addressing these three aspects of fertility health, your physical health, your emotional and mental health, and um, and your social well-being health. So these are eight strategies. I would like to take any questions that you might have, or if you if you have, for example, any struggles, you've been trying to find, to do a few of these things and you've been struggling, or maybe you have some advice to give to other people because you've been coping rather well. I would like to hear all about it. So bring on all the questions. Perfect. Thank you so much for those eight, um, well, eight uh, things that we should remember. I guess, you know, most of them are actually quite simple. We know them. Yeah. However, this is actually something we need to hear very, very often. I believe we tend to forget uh, yeah. that, uh, you know, what to focus on. So thank you so much for uh, for sharing this with us. Uh, I am sure this is, was this was like a very good reminder for many, many patients of ours and as you said it is definitely a time for your questions so again let me just simply remind you you can type them all in the chat section as Andrea already told you if you uh, if you wish to share any of your concerns uh, I'm sure she will be happy to to help you out as much as possible and uh, well I guess we are ready to to begin uh, so let me go to the first question that we have so I got primary hypogonadism. Uh, will this affect my fertility? Are you able to, to help us out with this question? Uh, yes, uh, it will. It can affect your fertility, but this is not something that you can resolve with behavior or lifestyle, unfortunately. So for this one, you need to go to a fertility specialist. Yes. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you. I'm right here, of course. Thank you so much for uh, your question. Hello, Caroline. Help. Uh, can you hear me, Andrea? Hello? Okay. We, um, I, we cannot hear Andrea right now. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, yes. I got, we got lost yes. for a second, but don't worry, we are right here. I just need the connection. Yes, perfect. Uh, let me just go to the next question that we have. So how long do you recommend to wait if I have three failed IVF cycles uh, already? And your age and your specific circumstances, but you have three cycles that haven't worked. We need to look at the reasons why these cycles haven't worked. So we need to look into all the 
so far, all the protocol that we have produced so far, looking at what has happened. If the if the cycle if there was a transfer and it just hasn't progressed to 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 developing into into a baby uh, very early on, there is no reason why you should wait. But I think instead of just going ahead very quickly, you need to speak with the fertility specialist to see this is what I've done. These are the exam the exams that I've done. What is it that I can do, or what might the problem be? Instead of just doing the same thing over and over again, just go back to the drawing board and look at the possible cause for why the cycles haven't been successful. Okay, thank you so much for, for that advice. And of course, uh, fingers crossed, all will be good as well. And uh, well, let me go to the next question that is the good summary, let's say, to, to what is happening to so many patients right now. So how to cope with the situation today? As the clock is ticking, I won't be more fertile than I am now. To be honest, I'll be less fertile with every, in every month. So, But today, the treatment is not really possible. and Nobody knows when or if we get back to normal. Any comments on that? Yes, unfortunately, I've been hearing that every day from so many people. And that is one of those situations that we need to let go because we cannot control how long this lasts. And so you you can't really focus on things that, that you're not in control of. The fact that it might last longer than, than a month, longer than two months, we don't know. The fact that you're not becoming more fertile, it's also a fact that is a fact of life of being women. And we know that as years go by, we become less and less fertile. But what I would like to, to focus on, instead of focusing on these things that I cannot control, I want to focus on the fact that IVF has in fact helped many people. And it has in fact um, helped many women who are over 40. So if it has worked for them, maybe it will work for you. Who knows? So instead of choosing the things that you cannot control, think of all the things that are in your favor and think of all the ways in which IPA has been really helpful to so many people. What can you do to make sure that IPA will be successful? All the strategies that we've been talking about today, the healthy nutrition, um, sleeping adequately, having a good routine, all of these things we've been talking about will make sure that your body is healthy and is ready for the protocol work. It's ready to carry a pregnancy to term. You will be in your peak state. So those are the things that we can focus on, that we can work on. And that would be my best would be to switch from what you cannot control to the things that you can in fact control. Perfect. Thank you so much in such case for uh, for helping us out with this uh, as well answer. And thank you for your um, for sharing this, of course, as Andrea already mentioned, this is you are not on your own. There are so many patients just like you with so uh, with the, what they are exactly at the same point. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, OK, so what are your thoughts on dairy and egg quality? Okay, it's a great question, and there's so much talk about it. There was a very large study that was uh, run by Harvard University, and they did um, they looked at fertility for women and men, and what aspects mattered when it comes to nutrition. And one of the things they talked about was milk. And the fact that switching to whole milk when trying to conceive seemed to be better. Now, they don't understand the reason why. Because full fat milk, whole milk, has way more fat than the milk we, we usually drink, semi-skimmed milk. But they just noticed that people who were drinking whole milk were uh, were more fertile so they cannot explain that 
a possible explanation um, that they have theorized is that whole milk is less processed. So if we are eating, eating less processed food, it tends to be better for our fertility. So that is the current evidence um, that we have is whole milk when trying to conceive and when you get pregnant, then switching to, to the normal milk. And perfect. Thank you for that advice as well. And uh, let me go to the next question. Um, just a second. Uh, okay. And what are your thoughts on caffeine? Also, how do you know what is too much exercise? Great, great question. So caffeine is so controversial. So there are some studies that say that caffeine affects fertility, but then there are other studies that say it doesn't make a difference. And the question is how much caffeine is too much? So there is no consensus on this topic. So my advice is usually to minimize it. If you feel that you need to have one coffee a day, then that's fine because there is really not a, a high quality study that has said 100% it affects fertility or 100% it doesn't. So it's just all about minimizing. And if you feel you can live with it, fine. If you feel you need to have one, if you feel you can have decaf or tea sometimes instead of it, then just remember that caffeine is not only on coffee. We also have caffeine uh, in chocolate. Caffeine is also present in soda drinks. So if you can minimize in any way, that would be super helpful for your fertility. In terms of exercise, that's another great question. So what research has found is that doing too much um, exercise is not helpful. And the question is, what is too much? Too much would be anything really, really strenuous. So if you are training, let's say you, if you are a personal trainer and your job is to be in the gym, doing exercise all day, that will be too much. If you are training for a marathon, if you are doing high intensity training, boot camp training, all those things are too much when it comes to fertility. So we're talking about doing much softer exercises. So you can still do cardio, you can still run, but just not run to a marathon. You can still uh, do yoga in terms of men. Men should avoid hot yoga. That's one of the things. So trying to do more moderate exercise and avoid that strenuous, very intense exercise seems to be the thing that affects fertility. And in terms of men, if we think about men who do a lot of exercise and who then take a lot of steroids to build on their, those muscles, steroids affect male fertility immensely so that is um one of the key things thank you so much again and uh, actually we have uh, the same question that you had before is it okay if you could just tell a few words uh, about that hypogandaism so that the patient can yeah so primary hypogonadism is a situation that will affect your fertility, but it's not something that can be resolved with, um, with lifestyle, with nutrition, or with behavioral changes that we have been talking about. This is a problem that will need treatment, and you need to speak with, your, with a fertility specialist about... Um, Having, tre having treatment if you want to have babies. So this is not something that we can resolve with, um, with some of the strategies we've been talking about today. Yep, thank you so much again for uh, answering that question. Hope that uh, answer it for you as well. And uh, well, 
Um, let me go to the next question. We receive this question quite often. That is why it's right here. Okay. So if you could answer yeah. that. Yeah. So what if my partner doesn't want to go for egg donation? We already had three fight attempts with own eggs. Now our best chance is egg donation. How can I convince him? It, it's so common. And sometimes it's the partner who doesn't want to go ahead with egg donation. Sometimes it's the woman who doesn't want to go ahead with egg donation. Um, and this is, like you said, Caroline, is something that happens all the time because people feel differently about what treatments to try, how long to try them from. So having this problem, number one, is absolutely common and normal. You are not alone in that. The first advice would be to speak with, um, with a counsellor, a psychologist, to explore the reasons why your partner doesn't want to go ahead with with uh, with egg donation. What are his fears? Is he afraid that he won't be connected to the child? Is he afraid that the child will will not look like you or or like the mother? What are the fears that are behind um, behind? He, his fear of not wanting to go ahead with explanation. So having this middle term of having a counselor or a psychologist moderating this conversation might be, might be really, really helpful. Um, and it's not a matter of convincing him. It's just about maturing ideas. Sometimes something that is not an option for me right now becomes an option a few months down the line. And this is so common when it comes to explanation. In the beginning of the journey, I might not be able to try it, but at the end, my mind is so open to alternative options that I think maybe I don't mind trying it because I learn more about fertility. I learn more about what is it that I want. Do I want a child to be similar to me? Do I want to experience pregnancy? Do I want a family? What is it that I want? And what is the solution that will bring me closer to the goal that I want. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I understand you also like mm -hmm. uh, have such couples. Yes, you are um, also providing such counsel, counsel uh, option, of course, for them. Andrea, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, just checking in then, of course. Thank you so much for answering this question. As I mentioned, this is something that we receive so, so often. So thank you so much for uh, providing us some details as well. Okay, and now we have another question. So if you could take a look at this. What are your thoughts on supplements like coenzyme 10? Any comments on that? Yes, so that is one of the supplements that has been proved to work. So definitely that's something that you can try and it might improve um, egg and sperm quality. So yeah, definitely give it a go. Perfect. Thank you so much. And actually it's uh, another one here. So I have bought a big one of Q10. How long before a collection should I take it? Okay. So we usually say that it, it takes three months to get your body ready. So thinking that you're taking these supplements and you're doing all the right nutritional nutrition choices and you're being mindful about the toxins that you're putting in your body, makeup, creams, all of that. And you're being mindful about the toxins in your environment, like cleaning the products that you use to clean the house, all of these things together. If you do them for three months, that's the ideal time for, for you to, to see an effect on the quality of your eggs, the quality of your sperm, and making sure you are at peak state for for fertility treatment to work. Yeah, perfect. Thank yep. you so much again for answering that question. And I hope that is not off topic, uh, but if you could share, I know you are also working as a nurse. Is it okay for you to share? Mm -hmm. How do you cope with how what's going on nowadays? What are what is your? Oh, it... Yes. So. Um... I've, I've been helping out the NHS here in the UK uh, once a week, and it, it's just so overwhelming to see so many people just suffer with coronavirus because people are actually dying. And for me, it's really hard 
to go through a 10 hour shift and see all these people go through these really challenging situations and and then having to come home and I just need to talk about it. So I talked to it with, with my husband and he's so patient, he, he listens to me, but he just allows me to vent and to say, this situation is really, really serious. And it just breaks my heart seeing people having their life cut short, dying be way before their time, seeing elderly people not being able to, to be with their family in their last moments or family not being able to say their goodbyes. So all of these situations absolutely break my heart, but I feel that as a nurse, I need to do my bit. And then my way of coping is just coming home, talking to my husband, and, and then just staying at home, minimizing the amount of time I need to go out, just doing my bit to prevent uh, the coronavirus from spreading and that's basically it, Caroline. Yeah, we we still need to stay focused and positive. This is really what we can yeah. do, right? So thanks for for that. Uh, of course, I. Uh, it's good that we have those husbands, family. I mean, without <laughs> it, it wouldn't be possible, right? So it's good that. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone has to have someone to to talk to, to just be able to you know um, reach out to whenever you need to, you know. So thank you so yeah. much for for sharing that. I'm sure you are not uh, feeling just like that. So <laughs> thank you. And uh, well, let me go to the questions we have. And just a reminder, remember that uh, we will be slowly finishing. So if you have any questions, this is now time to, to type them all in so that Andrea can help you out a bit, if a bit at least. <laughs> all right. And now let's go to it. So is it true that soda drinks, even sugar-free ones, are really bad for fertility? Yes, that's one of the worst things for fertility, um, not because they, including the sugar, but because they have caffeine as well. So soda drinks are bad. And the largest research study that I was talking about from Harvard University says the best drink you can possibly have for fertility is water. So drinking plenty of water, one and a half liters a day, and just avoiding soda drinks. They are highly processed. They are not natural. They have additives. They have, they have sugar. Even if they say there is nothing, there is always a small percentage of sugar replacement uh, products. They have caffeine. They are not good for fertility, and they're not good for so many other aspects of health. So uh, water. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. Yes, definitely. Water is the best option. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And uh, well, at this point, at least, uh, there, it is our last question, it seems. But again, if you have any left, mm -hmm. don't type it in. And uh, let me go straight to this one. Uh, so do you think castor oil packs are good for fertility? Well, I'm not sure what castor oil packs are. Okay, um, you perhaps could explain what you mean by that so we can... Uh... But from, I mean, in, in my work, I'm always um, reading new research on what works, what doesn't work, and we need to be really careful when there is a study that says this is really good for fertility because we need to understand how many, in, how many people was this tested on, what results were they looking at? And so sometimes people are reading the news or are reading very low quality studies and they don't seem to, to be effective. So, oh, I, I can yeah. see. Yeah, there is a follow up work here. So you put castor oil on your body with heat for about an hour and it's supposed to detox. I used it previously to get rid of ovarian cyst. Okay, interesting for sure. I have I haven't come across um, any clinical, you know, Western medicine kind of approach that uses this technique to improve fertility. And I haven't read any high quality research study to say it works. So it's not something that I usually 
recommend. And our body is very good at detoxing by itself. We don't need to do any of those things. If you think about it, for example, you're eating a good quality meal, food, you're using all these good products in your body and in your environment, what do you need to detox about? There is nothing to get rid of. If you're eating a lot of bad foods and processed foods, your body needs to untangle those foods to find the minimal nutritious um, content in them. So it has a lot to get rid of. But if you are eating healthy and if you're using products that are low in toxins, there is no reason why you need to, to do anything. So it's not something that I believe has been proven to, to be beneficial using that castor oil on your body. All right. Thank you so much for your advice, of course, your opinion on this. Thank you so much. And actually, in the meantime, we have another question. So let me show you right yeah. here. So how much animal protein should a woman consume daily for good egg quality? That, that's also a, a very good question. Thank you for asking that. And what the research studies have shown is that eating a lot of protein is not good for fertility. So I know I come from a Mediterranean country and we usually have protein as the center of our meal. And then we have a bit of eggs, a bit of uh, vegetables and a bit of uh, carbohydrates. And what this big Harvard study identified is that people who eat less animal protein tend to be more fertile. So one of the biggest advices we've been giving is to start having less protein. And when you have it, if possible, switch some of those time, some of those meals by vegetable protein. So eating less protein and switching some animal by vegetable protein seems to be better for fertility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much again for uh, that advice definitely useful and good to to know uh, someone is typing so let's give it a minute just to see if we have any more Brilliant. questions and of course if we don't we will be finishing uh, and thank you already anyone here is okay there's a question about oh yeah yes is it good or bad for fertility <laughs> Yes, so there, there is some evidence that soya is not very good because it, it messes up with our estrogen. So if you're thinking, for example, about switching, if you don't want to drink normal milk, one of the things that you can do is instead of drinking soya milk, which is particularly a problem if for men more than women, is to have, uh, for example, almond milk or rice milk. So those are perfectly good options that tend to be a bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there are nowadays lots of options. And mm -hmm. I guess it's always about the actual balance. Yes, just not to uh, drink too much, let's say, of, of soy milk. Yeah. It doesn't mean you cannot do it, right? And every now and then. Yeah, that's correct. Perfect. Thank you so much. And well, someone is uh, uh, again typing, not sure if it's going to be a question, but it is our last question. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> let's, uh, let's have a look at this. So what is your advice around the best treatment for Hashimoto uh, when it comes to fertility? Anything on that? What is your around Hashimoto? So I'm really not sure. Again, I think this must, this must be something for which you must need fertility advice by a specialist doctor. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it's something that you can deal with our with our regular advice um, and just get get pregnant naturally without having this specific advice. Yeah. I think you need to contact the doctor for this one. Okay, no, exactly. So, of course, check with your uh, doctor to make sure you will get the best, you know, uh, possible answer. And, of course, uh, all kinds of, uh, I'm sure all kinds of tests will need to be done just to see what, what is your, what is the best solution for you in such case, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, fingers crossed, uh, you will uh, be able to, to proceed very, very soon as well. 
All right. So um, someone is again typing. So let me <laughs> let me check. I just don't want to leave uh, without checking. No, it was questions. a thank you. Exactly. But it seems that we uh, that was our final question. So again, thank Yay. you so much for for joining us, Andrea. It is always good to have you back, oh. and I know it's not our last time. So uh, so it's always it's always a pleasure. Thank you for supporting our initiative. Uh, this is definitely, we are very, very thankful that you have been able to join mm -hmm. us and also become our ambassador of our Stronger in the Stronger yeah. Together initiative. So thanks so much for that. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, so many patients. Just thank you very much for your advice. Uh, thank you very much for <laughs> advice and the talk. <laughs> thank you. There are more thank yous right here. Um, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and here's more thank yous. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time of being here today. I hope it was useful and um, and I look forward to seeing all of you again very shortly here again. Exactly. Uh, so thanks. Thanks so once, once again. And once one more thing, remember that if you would like to get in touch with Andrea, you can also use the link that I have just sent you. Uh, there it is an option to click mm -hmm. and ask the question directly to Andrea. And I'm sure she will be happy to get back to you, help you some with some advice. And, uh, and I'm sure she'll be happy to talk to you as well. All right. So last uh, thing that i would like to say is that remember this uh, this uh, webinar will be available on our website myivfanswers.com and it will be available on the same a link that I have sent you just now. So you need to stay tuned and it will be uploaded very, very soon. Uh, and of course, you, once you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will be updated uh, when the new video is uh, uploaded. So this is a good thing to do for sure. And well, thank you so much for showing up every every day. Some of you possibly. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, We are happy that we are able to help you even if a bit. Um, uh, and Andrea, well, as I mentioned, it's always good to have you here. Thank you so much. Is there anything you would like to add? No, I, I'm more than happy to answer any questions privately through that link. I'm also running a, a free um, free support sessions uh, over Zoom. So if you'd like a support session just for you, Yes, um, then I'm more than happy to, to schedule you. Just follow the link that Caroline has sent and um, I'll be able to support you during your journey. Perfect. Once again, huge thank you. Have a good evening, all of you, and well, stay safe and take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.